Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be about how I made this little one. Um, she is available in my shop if my Patreon patrons haven't uh, already snapped her up. They do get early access. Um, but she was originally a commission, but the customer uh, had a change of mind on the colour. So um, I am putting her up in my shop to find a home. She's got a sculpy head, she's got resin feet, the wire uh, legs and a ball and socket armature in the body. Um, so yeah, she'll be available in my shop, uh, but if you want to see how I made her, then uh, keep watching. Alright, so if you haven't already seen my previous video on how I sculpted the head, uh, just head back to my channel and um, there should be a recent video where I've sculpted this head. I'll try and remember to link it, but I never remember. Um, so I go through the whole process of sculpting this head, um, so you can check it out before you watch this video. Uh, once I've done that, um, I start painting all my pieces, so I seem to have lost the footage of painting the head, but you get the same idea when painting the feet. Uh, just the head is made of sculpey and the feet are made of resin, but it's the same concept. I use a primer to prime all of the pieces that I want to paint. And then uh, once that's dry, I go ahead and paint all of the pieces. With the feet, um, you don't have to be too careful if you're covering it with faux, uh, with faux fur. So I tend to be a bit more uh, messy and quick with my painting on the feet because it's got, all going to be covered in fur anyway. So there's no need to waste that uh, extra time in... Um, making it look all pretty. But for the paint that I use, uh, it's a water-based acrylic paint by the brand Chromacryl, but you can find any sort of uh, acrylic paint in your local craft store or online. Um, and just test it out on your resin and uh, polymer clay pieces before you um, apply it to your final pieces and see how they react. I've never had a problem with acrylic paints, but it's always good to do some testing before painting anything. Next is cutting out the faux fur. So uh, this faux fur is pretty long. Uh, it's got a long pile on it. And I'm just sort of modifying a body that I have already. Uh, it's a Tasmanian tiger body, I think it was. And I just modified uh, the body a little bit to suit a chihuahua. So I'm just drawing out all of the patterns that I'm gonna um, cut out on the backing of my faux fur. So basically what I did was uh, trace around and well, sort of modify one side of um, the the body and then I'll cut that out and then um, I'll trace around that cut out body shape uh, and make create a second body shape I also cut out the underbelly uh, so all up there's three sides of the body so you can see I'm cutting out that first um, side and then I'll flip it over and draw the second side of the body just so it's the same shape as the first side and when I pin it together and sew it up it all meets and uh, is um, symmetrical. Now I always tend to uh, be a little bit careful with what you're uh, drawing onto the back of the fur first. So sometimes when you start gluing, the ink from what you've drawn your uh, patterns with sometimes seeps through. So if you're using white faux fur, use something like a grey lid um, and that way you won't get any seepage of the colour that comes through on, into the front of the faux fur. So it's always a good tip to um, not use something that's too uh, damaging, I guess, or that, um, that leaks through the fabric too much. Um, but uh, I, I tend to use uh, either a texter, uh, depending on the color of the faux fur, uh, some chalk or uh, gray lid, they work great as well. All right, so a little look at the faux fur that I'll be using. You can see uh, the patches of different coloring you can get in this uh, in this fabric. So it's got a uh, different colored sort of underbelly. You can see the coloring at the back here and also uh, it, on the tips, it's got like a black tips. Um, but just keep in mind when you're trimming this faux fur that you'll get patches instead of a solid color. So it's always uh, good to see what the under pile of the faux fur looks like before you use it, just in case you don't like what it looks like when you trim it. Um, so this process, I'm cutting out all the rest of the body. So I'm using a small pair of sharp scissors to cut the backing. Um, 
I prefer to use the scissors, it's, it's a lot easier to control and uh, a lot easier to stop yourself from cutting the, the pile because then it cuts all of the detail and the length off. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm just cutting out the extra side and the underbelly and then once that's done, uh, I'll end up, this is going to be sewn up in a sewing machine. In this process, I have a couple of different processes that I do, but for this one, I will be sewing it up with a sewing machine. So once everything's cut out, I can start pinning all of the pieces together. So so uh, first of all, I like to clean up all of the edges. Uh, so basically getting all of the loose uh, fibers off. Um, and that happens when you obviously cut the backing. Uh, the fibers don't have anything to stick to then. It's only a small, a small section of it that comes off, um, which would ordinarily be uh, covered by the seam anyway. Um, and then I just toss it in the bin or something. Uh, you can also use it as stuffing. It works great as well. Um, I haven't really done it, but... Um, I mean, what's the difference between stuffing and, and uh, faux fur pile? Uh, so yes, once that's done, I pin it all together. It goes fur side together and then I can sew up around the seam lines. I usually leave the back end open, the head and the legs so I can flip it the right way around. I have other processes that I do uh, for different bodies. You can check out my gorilla video if you want to see a different way um, of how I've done the body. Um, but in this one, this is a fairly simple process. Alright, so once it's all sewn up, this is something uh, that I have after it and you can see how I've left that, uh, the legs open so I can flip it, uh, the fabric inside out, uh, also the back end as well. You need a, uh, a, a pretty big uh, back end opening to be able to flip the, all of the material through, especially if you've got really really thick faux fur, uh, it tends to make it a little bit difficult. If you've got really thick faux fur, I'd suggest leaving um, the openings a bit larger and that way you're not... Um, sort of stretching the fabric too much or ripping ripping the fabric um, and if you're having a bit more trouble I'd suggest using a blunt uh, tool so like a wooden tool or a, or a plastic tool don't use anything metal because uh, you'll end up piercing a hole through your fabric um, and if you're having uh, a bit more trouble you can also get some pliers I use needle nose pliers and I just sort of grab the fabric over on itself and pull it through that method works really well it's not too stressful on the faux fur um, and uh, yes, but if you're having trouble, just leave the openings a little bit bigger or even unpick it and sew it again. Um, but this is what we have once we've uh, sewed it all up. You can see it's the body starting to take shape. It does definitely needs a bit of a trim. Um, you can see all the colors in the faux fur as well. So this is something that we'll have when it starts getting put together. So the armature is made of a ball and socket spine with uh, wire legs. And uh, I usually do that sometimes whether the legs are thinner or I want them thinner. The ball and socket armature tends to be a bit a bit thicker. Um, so I usually opt for a ball and socket spine so I can get that support for the head. Uh, and then I move on to wire armature for the legs, uh, especially if the feet are small as well. Uh, you want to uh, have something that's a bit smaller. And the wire holds up pretty well um, when it has that support from the wire armature, up from the ball and socket armature. It helps holds up pretty well. So once that's all put in and put together, I can start sewing everything up. So I'm using a ladder stitch to close all of my loose ends. Uh, and then once that's all sewed up, I use a tacky fabric glue to attach all of the faux fur to the either resin or polymer clay pieces. Um, sometimes glue can have a strange reaction with those two. I've never had it. So also, again, test, 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 test. Uh, and if you have any problems, um, try something else. Uh, I know some some glue I've had uh, has reacted strangely with the polymer clay where it's made the polymer clay soft so um, it's always good to test out some things uh, before you actually do it on a final piece. So I use a tacky fabric glue from a local store here called Spotlight um, but uh, I'm sure you can find something again in your local craft stores and I just sort of apply it inside, uh, make sure the fabric goes over the resin piece and leave it overnight to dry and it would attach pretty hard. So once that's done, I can start adding some polyfill. So polyfill, you can see in the background there, it's just like a cushion, uh, cushion stuffing. Uh, again, you can get it from your local craft stores. Um, I get mine from Spotlight here. And then I can start sewing up all of the uh, back end. So slipping on the tail over my um, ball and socket armature. Uh, if you need a little bit more length, the good thing with ball and socket armature is you can add a little more, little more to it. So you can add or subtract. 
uh, just depending how long you want your tail. And once that's done, I again sew it up with a ladder stitch and sort of make sure it's nice and sturdy and there's no holes or gaps or anything like that. Um, get yourself a good quality thread. It really, really helps. It makes a difference. Um, you don't want a thread that's easily, easily broken. So I use Gudeman thread. It's really great quality. I've never had a problem with it. I mean, you can snap it if you pull it <laughs> too much. It is uh, only a thin piece of thread, but I find their quality um, really out, it, it outshines any other thread that I have tried myself. Um, so yeah, thread is always a good, uh, important thing to get good quality pieces. And then again, once it's all sewn up, I can, the last thing I do really is attach those two back legs to the resin pieces and then uh, usually leave everything to dry properly overnight again, just to make sure everything's adhered and sturdy. Uh, and if there's anything that I need to re-glue, I'll do the whole process over again. So once that's all done, I start attaching some faux fur to the face. Uh, once that's done, uh, again, I start cleaning everything up and redoing all of the painted pieces because sometimes the faux fur gets a little trapped on it and uh, it sort of loses a bit of detail. So I go ahead and just remove anything that needs to be removed or is stuck in the wrong place or uh, needs, to, needs to be gone. And then I go ahead and repaint everything that needs to be repainted. And you see, as soon as you start adding little little details, the dolls really come to life and their personality really comes out. I know when I first started doing that and um, I painted, I, I, I applied some faux fur onto a kangaroo doll and it sort of lost all of its character. But then adding a little bit of shading really brought it out and changed its personality. So have a play around with different colouring and different shadows and um, markings or anything like that on your dolls. Uh, you'll be surprised how much different char characteristics you can uh, you can achieve from that. All right, so that is it for today, guys. Uh, if you want to purchase this doll, you can probably find her in my shop if my patrons haven't already snapped her up. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. If you want to join, the link is in the description. You get a whole heap of different perks and uh, tutorials. Uh, you can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat and also my store at creaturesofnat.com. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.